Hi everyone, welcome to a new kind of video on my channel. Today I'm going to be looking at a video about idiots and cars. And the thing I find mainly in these kind of videos is that even though the people driving are not technically at fault or don't create the issue, they could have thing they could have done things to prevent it from becoming an issue. Uh, the video that I'm going to be looking at today is made by the YouTube channel Idiots and Cars. If you like the video, please go over to them, subscribe and like. Okay, so let's get into this. So the f the first video is, as you can see, like we're driving in a parking lot, right? Uh, let's make it not too late. And you see this car starting to reverse. Okay, the first thing I'm thinking in parking lots is a lot of cars are like parked forward. And it can be difficult for the driver, when they are backing out, to see onto the road, right? It can be difficult to see like what's coming. So when I'm driving on a parking lot, I'm constantly looking at, besides, constantly looking at cars that are backing out or that they're driving out that might not have seen me and I try to keep my speed as low as possible to prevent like what happens after this. So as you can see like the car continues to go out, the driver of the car we're in is either not paying attention or just doesn't see it, doesn't notice it. And it does become a crash. It does become a small uh, small hit. So what they could have done to prevent it is to keep the speed down and keep looking at every car on every side. Keep their eyes on Africa, see if they are moving. Even though they technically have priority here, if this car that's backing out does not see them, they can't stop. They can't stop for something that they don't see, right? So even if you have priority, just make sure that you actually get priority. That's like the main thing in this video. Uh, let me see the next video. Again here, like you see where they're standing in the red light, people are turning left from opposite lanes. And I don't think there's anything right to the uh, camera car, right? I don't think there's anything all right. And all of a sudden someone speeds like right through an intersection, through a red light, and they get hit. If I'm this car, I'm even though I have a green light, and even though I have priority, and no one's supposed to be on the intersection from another direction, I am constantly looking, because I think, even though we can't see it, I think you can see that if you're in a nearing the intersection, this car is going very fast. You can see that it's speeding towards the uh, light and you can start thinking maybe it's not going to stop. And in this case I would not take the chance that it isn't going to stop. I'm gonna go back on the throttle or hit the brakes even a bit. Just to prevent not hitting it, uh, just to prevent hitting it if it does go through a red light. Because even though again the blue car has priority here, it kinda did cause an accident because it wasn't looking at the other lanes and because it wasn't slowing down at all. Even though you have priority, just make sure you actually get priority. That's like the main thing, the first thing we learn when we get our driver's license here. The next video, however, is a bit difficult, it's a bit more, it's a bit different, right? Because you can actually see something happening here. So, what happens is this car crosses the line and you have a head on collision, right? Now, if you go back a few seconds, right, you have like a very tight corner. And when you get here, you see this car is not turning like the other cars, right? When you get here, you see it's crossing the line, so it's probably going to hit you. In this case, like, and this is the thing why it's important to constantly check your mirrors and constantly know what's going on the, on the range of you, right? When you see this, the camera car keeps driving forward. What I would have done is, if I know there's nothing to my right, I would have swerved to the right, knowing that there's space. And I think that's space because I don't see any other cars driving next to it. And that just prevents this from becoming an actual collision. Like, you can actually swerve to the right here. You see it's going across the line. It might happen fast, but if, you, if it happens too fast, maybe you should slow down for the corner, right? You just don't go into things very fast. You just take out your speed. And you can react a lot faster and you can really abandon... You can really, like, make a lot of issues not really issues, right? And this does become a crash, and probably a pretty bad one, where both, uh, both airbags went off, both cars are probably totaled. This is just someone that doesn't secure a load, and really there's nothing you can do about that as a driver, it's really a responsibility of like the white pickup truck to secure that load. When it goes wrong, it isn't their fault, and it might even be that they haven't even noticed that something fell out. So like the best thing to do now, and I see that the car is doing that, is they slow down and they get more distance between them and the white pickup truck. 
here of course here you have like a street view and no auto traffic it's a one car incident and there's a car that either goes too fast but I believe there's another corner here it goes too fast lose control or it just doesn't turn properly or not the way it's supposed to really again like I don't know this road, I don't know why it would have happened. I know it happened twice because later in the video the same driver comes up. But I think maybe the driver just took too much speed into the corners. Uh, maybe overestimate how sharp the corners were. And then we come to this video. Uh, okay. Let me see. So someone's taking, uh, so taking you on the shoulder, right? I'm not quite sure what country this is in, really, but they have Citroën, so I think it's somewhere along. Around, somewhere around. So this is guy just overtook you on the shoulder, right? So you know. He's rather impatient, probably has a bad temper, maybe. You just know he's doing stuff he's not supposed to, right? Then he's in the brakes, he's still trying to go left here. And the camera car gets very close to him. He keeps getting very close to it. I would have just taken out all speed, and now the camera car starts honking. Even though I can understand you being pissed off at this, I wouldn't do that. Just try not to make a conflict out of it. Just stay behind the... Uh, the Mesa, stay behind the black car, they get a bit of speed, get some distance between you and just try to go on with your life, just don't make it an issue. Because even though he wasn't an, an arsehole really, it was not really an issue. And now he keeps driving here, keeps trying to overtake, even though he sees the white car going into his lane, he gets very up close up to the white car, he sees lights flashing and he keeps honking, right? At this point he keeps crawling towards the white car, every single time the white car moves a bit, the camera car moves a bit, he swerves into a, a lane where there is traffic still, and he keeps driving forward. I would have just to still and just see what plays out. And here, even here he keeps honking and I do not think that's necessary. If anything, look at that does make your own life a bit more difficult because I think excessively honking is illegal in most countries. So technically the police car even had a right to pull him over as well. The next one is just someone either not really watching where they're going or not really noticing other traffic around them and reacting rather late really. Here you see already that this truck is slowing down, right? You're like you're coming near it. And the camera car keeps driving for another few seconds before it actually starts braking. It starts braking very very hard. And even though I don't see the full video, I don't know what happens further back in this video, I do think that since there's a turning lane here, since our car's turning here, probably should be watching. It probably should be careful and should maybe even take out a bit of the speed. Because right now, like, all of the cars are just driving all along a normal speed until someone has to brake suddenly. And now this truck's braking and the, tr the camera truck takes another few meters, getting very close to the other one and has to brake very very hard. So I think first of all the following distance was a bit too short, I always keep two seconds between me and another car. But I also think the reaction time was a lot slower than it's supposed to be. So maybe the driver of the car is not really looking at where they're going. Another thing I see here is there's like a clear lane to the right. Now I don't see any other traffic here, but I believe there's no other traffic in this lane. So if you keep checking your mirrors regularly, you can know that there's nothing here. So even when this car slows down and you regulate, you can swerve to the right and go into a clear lane where there's nothing and give yourself more time to brake. And it does prevent what happens after. Because here he gets by, he gets rear-ended, and he gets rear-ended by like deep cars. You can see it here, like. He suddenly has a brake, he slams on the brakes, and this car tries to swerve but it's too late. This car doesn't even try to swerve. If he swerved in the first place, because you see there's no traffic in the other lane. If he would have swerved to the right in the first place, he could have, he had enough time to react to swerve to the other uh, lane, right? It wouldn't have been an issue because then the other two cars would have had more space to brake or even give them more time to swerve into the other lane as well. It could have prevented like three cars, three, four cars from getting damaged. Possibly even more. So like the main thing there is just keep looking in your mirrors regularly, you know what's going on behind you and you can actually, it can give you an extra option instead of breaking very, very hard. Okay, next is this video, right? 
And the first thing I see when I'm coming here is this truck is doing some weird things that they're not supposed to. But the camera car keeps going the normal speed, right? They keep going the speed they are, they are going until very close to until very close to the truck. And at this point, start checking your mirrors way before. Like you can see, if you're coming up here, you can already start uh, checking if there's something here, right? Is there something in these two lanes? If there's not, you give yourself an extra option of going to the right here. This car's doing that, he's going to the right. Now you see the truck doing some weird things. Still, there's more than enough time to go to the right because there is no other traffic. And you, can, you either could have kept up your speed or you should have slowed down a lot for, uh, earlier. Because it does help slowing down a lot earlier. You do give yourself a lot more time to react to things that might be happening. Okay, and then here again, here's the same thing. You see two cars doing something they're not supposed to, right? They're going over like a uh, solid white line. But the camera car does keep up its speed until really close to the other cars. Here it starts braking. And what this does is uh, if there's someone behind you and you start braking very heavily, they might not know what's going on in front of them. And they might not realize that you're going to brake very hard, very late and smash into the back of you. So in this case, again, either check your mirrors constantly and know your options because if there's no one to the left here, at this point you can start swerving to the left if there's no one on the left here. And I don't think there is, given the rest of the video. And you see two cars doing strange things. Just hit your brakes, just slow down a lot. Take out most of your speed and you give yourself a lot more time to react. And you give the other people behind you a lot more time to react to it as well. Because if something happens here, even though this car is doing things it's not supposed to, I do partially blame the camera car as well if something would happen here. Because they could have reacted to it a lot better than they did. See, that was the only car on the left, and there was an entire lane between them. Here's the same street we had earlier. And again, I do think... I don't know if there's another corner here, so I can't really claim what's going on here. Again, I do think it's a car just taking too much speed into a corner. And then not being able to control the car. But it's very difficult to say that, because I don't know what the street looks like. So I can't really comment on that. This is, again, a video that... Really, there's nothing to say about it. Because it's very hard to see that there's a dock here, right? Like, it's a grey dock on a grey pavement. It's a very tiny dock. Sure, the car could have swerved or could have done anything. But really, I don't blame the car here at all. Because, like, eventually nothing happens as well. You see the car braking as soon as I see the dock crossing. I do not blame the driver for anything. They did everything they could. They even braked. They had a very solid reaction time as well. This is someone just doing something they're not supposed to, right? It's just someone being an idiot. There's nothing to say about it, so I'm gonna skip most of those videos. But this one is interesting again. Because here you have someone already doing things they're not supposed to. And like everyone here knows that. Now you see him going onto the shoulder very fast and spinning out. I like that everyone here just hits the brakes and just lets him do his thing and sees how it plays out. And what I like most of all is that this car actually pulls over to check if the driver's okay. Because I think, and I've seen it a lot, that people just drive on, think like he was an idiot, it was his own fault, and just drive on. I would always recommend pulling over and actually checking if the driver's okay. Because if they're not, in some places you might actually be legally binded to that, you might actually be in trouble for that, for not checking if they're alright. Here you come to like a crossing, right? You have like a bigger road here, and you have a crossing. What happens here is, you see, this car starts going. The Mercedes, sure, maybe he didn't even notice it. But by now this car starts going, right? And now it should be noticeable for the Mercedes as well. What I don't like the Mercedes does, is that it does keep driving forward. It keeps driving. I would have just hit the brakes and stopped. And now it almost comes into conflict with this car, because it's still focused on going. I would have just stopped. I would stop like before the crossing, or before even crossing the other road here, the other lane, just to see what that bigger car is going to do, and just give myself the time to react to anything, and to look again, look left or right again, and see if there's other traffic that might become a problem. So yeah, I would have liked to see this car actually just 
either slow down a lot more or just stop and not keep going. Because it was fairly obvious from a very early point that this car was going to go in front of them. It was not going to let it go. And then I believe this is the last video and it's quite interesting. Because it's someone doing something they're not really supposed to and someone reacting in a very poor way. You see that this grey car is overtaking on the shoulder. And this truck does not like that. Now, I don't like this truck trying to push the grey car out of the road. It just does not seem like a good idea to me and I believe in a lot of countries that would even be illegal. I know we're driving hungry and I know in most of Europe this would be illegal the truck is doing as well. Because you're actually actively trying to push someone off the road. And I don't like that. Like, if if you would have just let the uh, silver car, the grey car go, the worst thing that would have happened is that the grey car is now in front of him. Nothing would have happened, nothing would have been an issue. Maybe there was a police car that would have seen the grey car do it and pulled him over, maybe not. But it's not the issue, it's not the problem that the truck driver has to worry about. And I see this happening a lot where people try to push someone out or like get overtaken and don't like it and they speed up. I never understand why you would do that. I just don't react to it at all. Just don't bother with it. Because this car's never going to learn. At the first next stop he's probably going to do the same thing again. He's not gonna change his ways just because the truck driver didn't like it one time. All you're doing is creating more conflict that was necessary and probably even getting yourself into legal trouble by pushing a car off the road. And like, it was not necessary for anything. And even if you see here, the car tries to go in, uh, in between the cars, in between the two trucks, and the truck driver just keeps swerving to the left now, trying to squish this car between him and the other truck. I do not like something like that because you do get yourself into legal trouble and it is not needed. If you would let the car just pass you on the shoulder, nothing is going to happen. The car's going to be in front of you and it's not your problem anymore. So that was pretty much all for this video. Uh, a lot of videos that I've seen and that I do think a lot of drivers could have reacted better to. Again, the video is made by, by the YouTube channel Idiots and Cars. If you did like it, make sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification. You can do the same on my channel as well if you do like the video. I hope this is going to be a new series that I can make and that people actually like the videos. And I hope, do hope you all have a nice day.